Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use OBS Studio to record a guest on programs like Skype, Zoom or Google Hangouts using Windows, Mac or Linux. First of all we need to install some tools, so we're going to install the NDI runtime tools for Windows and Mac. And then we're going to install the OBS Studio NDI plugin. So if you come across here, you see this is for Windows, Mac or Linux. And we come across to the download section here. And for Ubuntu and Linux based distributions, you're going to need to install two Debian packages, the NDI runtime and the actual plugin. And for Mac or Windows, you just need to download the installer. And I've done a little video on how you can set up NDI on Ubuntu. So for Linux, what we're going to do is install the OBS V4L2 Sync virtual camera because we don't have the NDI virtual camera on Linux. So if you come across to the download section here, you'll see the dev file that you need to download and install the plugin. I've also made a short video about how you do this on Ubuntu. Next, on Windows, we can install the OBS Virtual Camera. So we've just come across here and click the uh, Go To Download button. And on Mac, there's also a Virtual Camera you can install as well. Just scroll down here and it will explain how you can use it. And scroll up here to the releases and you'll see the releases. You click that link to open it in a new tab and then download the PKG file and install the package. On Windows and Mac we can also install the virtual cables which we will use to add the audio from OBS Studio into the chat program. So you can just come across and download the free version for Windows or Mac. On the Mac, you also need to install the Black Hole Audio Driver to capture desktop audio. So if you scroll down this page, it will have instructions on how you can install this using a package or you can install it via Homebrew. And this is the setup instructions. Basically, what you need to do is open the audio MIDI setup on the Mac. Open the audio devices window. Then you create a multi output device. Select the output devices. And set the audio device to the multi output device that you created. So here you can see I've created the multi output device and added my um, headphones and the other section that we need to do, the output device, and then we come across here and we select multi output device from our sound um, drop down menu. On Linux, what we need to do is um, create a virtual microphone using pulse audio. And what we do is we run these two commands here, and this will create a virtual microphone that is similar to the virtual cables on Mac and Linux. And we can also set this to load by default every time we start the computer but by creating a default.pa pulse audio configuration file with the following settings. And you can see here, this will create the null sync and the virtual source. And once I've done that, if I open the Pulse Audio volume control, you'll see that um, in the, out, the, the recording, I have a virtual source. And the output device, we have the null output. 
And I also made a uh, short video on how you can set this up on Linux, so you can follow along there. And on Windows, what we need to do is set up our monitoring device in OBS Studio to the virtual cable, which we do by opening our settings, coming across to the audio, setting the desktop audio to default, setting our microphone, and setting the virtual cable as the monitoring device. And you can use the free version of the uh, VB cables for this. We then come across to the advanced audio properties. And what we need to do is set our microphone to monitor and output. But we leave the desktop audio set to monitoring off. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing on the Mac. So it's exactly the same setup. We set the monitoring device to the virtual cable. We open the preferences, the audio tab, and under the microphone, we set our mic. And under the second mic, we set the black hole. And the advanced monitoring device is set to VB cable. We then come across to our advanced audio properties. And we select the microphone and set that to monitor and output. But mic 2, which is the black hole, we set to monitor off. And on Linux, what we do is we open the um, settings. This is the diagram. We set the monitoring device to uh, monitor, monitor with null output. We come across to the audio settings. And you can see I've got the desktop audio set to default. The microphone is set here. And under advanced monitoring device, we set it to monitor of null output. Then we come across the advanced audio properties. And we select our microphone. And we select that to monitor and output. But we leave the desktop audio set to monitor off so the audio doesn't get sent back to the person on the other end of the call. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the virtual cable on the Mac. Basically just come across, download the free version. Open the DMG file. Once it's mounted, we can double click the PKG file to uh, bring up the setup wizard. Just run through that, click agree. And then install. And you don't need to reboot your computer for this. Just put in your admin password. And it will pop up a browser window after it's completed the setup, which you can just close. And you can then quit the uh, setup wizard and close all the windows. And then if we come across to the system preferences and to the sound tab, You'll now see that we've got a virtual cable input, a VB cable input, and a VB cable output. And if we come across to preferences, the audio section, you can see here we've got the uh, advanced section, and what we do is we set that to VB cable. We then come across to the advanced audio properties, just like we did before. And we set the microphone to monitor and output. And now we can see um, our chat program, Google Chat, Google Meet rather. And we've got the NDI video coming in. But what we want to do is come across to the audio tab. And what we're going to do is set the microphone to be the VB cable instead of NDI audio. So you can see the audio is coming through through the NDI. But we need to set it to VB cable so we don't get any feedback from OBS Studio. So you come across down here, click the little drop down, set it to VB cable. 
and you can see the audio is coming through in a little microphone to the right. So now what we're going to do is have a look at the NDI output. So if we come across the tools, NDI output settings, we enable the main output. And what you need to do is on Windows, you need to launch the NDI virtual input program. And that's going to launch, that's going to open a little icon in your sys tray. It may be behind the arrow. Um, so you just click on that. And what we're going to do is we select um, the output device and we're going to give it a 20 dB boost for the audio. And you can also set the output resolution to say 720p. Now on the Mac we're going to do the same thing. We launch the NDI virtual input. But we don't get as many options on Windows as on Windows. We can just select the um, output and that's going to create the virtual camera and microphone for us. So now in Skype what we're going to do is come across and you can see we've got the NDI video and the microphone but again what we're going to do is set this to the VB cable and we need to come across to the um, calling advanced menu and then in there you'll find a little switch to enable NDI output so just toggle that on and that's the diagram of how the setup's going to work uh, for zoom what we're going to do is the same sort of thing come across into the settings Got the video set to NDI. Come across to the audio and the microphone, and we're going to select that and set that to the VB cable. And that's a diagram of how you can get the audio back into OBS Studio.